What is up guys? In today's video we're going to be going over how we can create a circular progress bar in Xcode and I'm going to be using Swift for this of course. So let's go ahead and deploy this live preview and you're going to notice that it's also animated. So that's great. And if we go ahead and click on this increment button, it's going to be able to progress in the bar in an animated way. So that's pretty cool. Once it gets to 100%, it's going to go back to 10%. But of course, you're going to replace that with whatever value you want to insert there. I'll show you how to customize it, how to change the color, and so on. So as always, the first thing we have to do is go ahead and hold Shift Command plus N to create a new project. And it's just going to be a regular app. Click on Next. The name is going to be called whatever you want. It can be Circle CCC. And then click on Next. And we will just create a new Xcode project. Now inside here, we're going to minimize this tab here and the sidebar over there. And we're going to go ahead and pick iPhone 13 for this example. Then we're going to go ahead and click on resume so we can see the active preview. Now the first thing we're going to do is create a struct of progress bar. So struct progress bar, and that's going to extend view. And the first thing we have to do is create a binding variable. So var progress and that's going to be of type float. So that's going to take care of actually inserting the value that we want to update. Then we're going to add a variable of caller and this will be of type caller. And I'm going to have a default value of caller.green. But of course you can change this later in case you want to make multiple circular progress bars. Next, we need to go ahead and create a variable called body, which extends some view because that is the protocol we use to create a view. And here we're going to use something called a Z stack, which instead of aligning items vertically or horizontally, it puts them directly on top of each other. So the first thing we should specify is a circle. And the first one is going to be for the background. So we're going to provide a stroke with a line width of 20. Then we want to provide an opacity, which I will set to 20%, so 0 0.20. And finally, we want a foreground color of the background. So it's going to be color.gray, and you can put whatever color you want. This will be the back bar of our progress bar. So that's the first circle we have. Next, we need to create a second circle where we will display the progress. So circle, and the first thing we need to specify is dot trim. And we want to trim it from 0.0 to, and here's where we call cg.float min of x and y, and x is going to be set to self.progress, and the y is going to be set to 100%, so 1.0. So that's just going to take care of actually showing the progress at the correct spot. Then we're going to go ahead and call the stroke, and inside here we're going to provide a style of stroke style, which is going to take a line width of 12.0, a line cap of dot round. So that just makes sure that the corner or the edges of the bar are going to have round edges. And if you want them to be square, of course, you can just put square in there. And we also want the line join to be dot round. It's just nice to have these round edges on modern devices. So we just specify round for a lot of them. Next, we should go ahead and specify this foreground caller, which is going to be set to the caller we specified up here as a variable. And we also need to provide a rotation effect, which is going to be of an angle of 270 degrees. And you're going to notice in a moment that if we don't do this, we're going to have the circle start at a different location than the top. We want it to start at the top and go around in a circle just like that. So 270 degrees, make sure that it starts at 12 o'clock. And finally, we're going to provide an animation. So this animation is going to be set to ease in, ease out with a duration of how long you want this to last. I'm gonna put two seconds because I thought that looked best. But this will take care of creating our progress bar. Now let's actually go ahead and call it in the content view. So in our content view, we need to go ahead and create a state of var progress value because this will be updated as time goes on to display a value to the screen. So float is going to equal 0, 0.0 as a default. Then we can go inside here, create a v stack, and inside here we're going to insert our progress bar and we need to specify the progress. So the progress is going to be set to self dot binding variable of progress value. And before I continue, I'm gonna go down here because I have an error and that is because the content previews is inside the progress bar. And that is because I also forgot a curly bracket over here. 
So by adding that curly bracket, we're going to be able to get rid of that error and we're going to have a circular progress bar there. Chances are you didn't have this error because you followed this correctly and we're not missing a curly bracket. But in case you were, make sure that everything is in its own struct. By going back here, now you can see it's actually occupying a big portion of the screen, which we do not want. So we're going to go ahead and specify a frame with the width and the height. So here we'll go frame, width, height, and we'll start with the first one, which will be set to 160.0, followed by 160.0, and we do not need an alignment. So we'll just take that part off. We will update the preview and it should fit perfectly in the center of the screen. We also want to give this some padding. So it's going to have 20.0 as the padding. So we have some space around that. And as soon as this view appears, we're going to call on appear and we want to perform this function. And that is self.progress value. And we're going to set that to 0.30 or whatever the initial value is that you want for this progress bar. Now, if you go ahead and click on the live preview, you're going to notice that on appear is going to get called. It's going to set this to 30 and the program is going to animate it to 30%. Now, of course, we want to go ahead and also increment it with a button. So here we'll go ahead and create a button called increment. And inside here, we're going to type in if progress value is less than one, we can type in self dot progress value and we're going to do plus equals 0.10%. Else, we're going to deduct one from the progress value so we can try so we can use it again so progress value minus equals 1.0 so to explain this real quick we're going to increment it by 0.10 percent each time we click on the button once it reaches a value that's more than one we're not going to see any progress on the bar anymore that's why i want to reset it to its initial position by just deducting one so if we go ahead and click on this live preview it's going to go to 30%. When we click on increment, it's going to add 10% each time. If we do it three times, it's going to go up 30%. And once we reach 100% and click on it again, it's going to deduct one from it and start again from zero. And if you want to change the color of it, you can go ahead and type in color and then just specify color.red or some other color or whatever color you want. And it's going to update it in the live preview as you can see over there. And of course you can go ahead and also change the initial start value with something such as 0.80. And let's go ahead and run the emulator because sometimes the preview will not update the percentage change you are displaying. So it's always good to run it on the emulator directly because you will always get the accurate result printed to the screen. As you can see, the emulator took us to 80%. We can go up one. But if we go back here and type in 0.1, you're not always going to see the update appear on the preview. And even if we wrote 0.10% here and click on the live preview, chances are it's not going to register that immediately. But of course, if we go ahead and run the emulator, we're going to be able to see those changes happen immediately. With that being said, guys, as always, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next iOS tutorial.